Hello, I'm Mark Elstob and I'm playing number six, The Prisoner. Uh, my name is Genevieve Gaunt and I'm playing number 43. My name's Lucy Briggs-Owen and I play Kate Butterworth and maybe some other people as well. My name is Rick Davey. I run a website called The Unmutual Website, which is the world's largest website devoted to the Prisoner series, both the original series and the Big Finish remake. This is C981 and we are rolling. The Prisoner is uh, uh, as a description of the whole thing, if you like, the concept, uh, both the television series and the, the audio production, and all the other media representations of The Prisoner. I never saw the American production, uh, but I read the comics and I've read some of the novels. Um, and the message, if you like, remains the same, pretty much, which is that it's about dehumanization. Uh, it's about the crushing of the individual. It's about the uh, homogenizing of, of ourselves. It really freaks me out as an idea. It's, and I think that's why it's so, so brilliant and compelling and as a series, but it, it's that Kafka thing of not knowing where you are and who is who, and it really terrifies me. The Prisoner is a series which can be viewed or listened to in this case on more than one level. On one hand, it's a great action adventure series. On the other hand, it's an allegorical conundrum. It makes you think about the world that you're living in. It's far more relevant today than it probably was when it was made in the 60s. It stands the test of time and questions of democracy and how we navigate politics and I guess also some quite existential questions about who are we and where we're going and what we're doing and who you can trust. So, But it's also funny, so it's great, yeah. Um, the most fun thing about doing The Prisoner here in this studio, um, that's a very difficult question. It's all fun, but, uh, uh, you know, What's why is it fun? Because the scripts are great. They are really, really good. They are they are thought provoking, and they are lines that you want to say, uh, which is not always the case. Um, they are lines that tend to trip off the tongue quite easily, and, and they have a weight behind them. They have a heft behind them. Um, the people who come in, the the actors who come in to play the various characters, uh, are invariably really good at their jobs and well cast and. Uh, often people who've worked for Big Finish before. It's a great atmosphere. It is like watching a sort of family at work, if you like, because they all obviously get on so well. But they're all such talented performers as well that there's a, a switch that goes off almost. They're laughing about it and then suddenly the light comes on and Mark is number six and he's terrified. And then the light goes off and then they're all laughing and joking. I think it's very important that in order to create that, that there is a lightness with energy and lots of good humour and there is, there's lots of giggling when we make this. You wouldn't want Kenneth Williams doing that, would you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> mate! <laughs> okay, on to scene 16. This is just a pub. And I think that's, that's, a, that's a big finish thing, probably. Big finish is like a family, and it's been a joy today to see that happen in, in real life. It is funny the way that goes. I think one has the assumption that when you're working on a comedy, it's all giggles, and that's often not the way. Um, because this is heavy, it's heavy going, and you need that release, and you need to, it's a yin and yang thing, you know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, and I think that that is absolutely the case, and it probably helps the work, absolutely it does. All the prisoners are recorded in a, in a, a recording studio where all the actors are basically in the same room, so we get to look at each other, I mean, you, you, you're reading a script. You almost feel like you're on stage in a funny way, you know, um, and we often look at each other, there's eye contact, and it's really through connecting to other actors and thinking it, and I feel like we do create a world. By the end of the day, we feel like we are <laughs> we're all in these different locations. It's, it's great, unless I'm put in the sound booth <laughs> and, uh, you, know, you know, kept in solitary confinement if I've been naughty, <laughs> but um, hopefully not all the time. <laughs> I remember when we were younger, we had um, a Roald Dahl book of the witches on audio tape. And there was this line that said, um, hello children, are you sitting comfortably? And then, hello children, are you sitting comfortably? And they sounded exactly the same. And we were asked if we could tell the difference, because if you can tell the difference, then you can tell who the witch is. And you couldn't hear the difference. And um, Six's experience of 
of not being able to tell who he is, who others are around him, is, is enhanced tenfold by not having a visual. I think the limitations of the original series are playing for all to see. There's only so much you can do with, with Rover. There's only so much you can do with various torture techniques. In audio, you can go anywhere. So you can let the, the, the writing take you away in your imagination. So there's some fantastic episodes where, for example, there's one episode where the prisoner goes to the moon. And there's another episode where it's completely in darkness. And that wouldn't work on television because you'd just be hearing some voices for 50 minutes and you're thinking, what am I looking at? But on audio, that really does work ever so well. I think the issues that the series addresses have not gone away, will never go away. I think that Big Finish is a tried and tested machine for presenting stories and presenting ideas in audio format and it would be almost criminally wrong for them not to have a go at the prisoner. It ha it's quite complex as an idea, as a, well, it's quite, it's, it's simple, but it's also quite a complex world. And I think that by having all these very rich, varied voices, a listener can be so drawn into that world that it's, it, it kind of, the simplicity of people's voices really rounded out. It's a heightened analogy of the way that we all live. We're all in the village and it's, and it's a discussion about free will and how much we may or may not have that. I've read the scripts of the third series and um, I think it's possibly the best series yet. I don't think anyone who listens to any of them would be disappointed. I really don't. I can't see how else it could have ended. And it's just the most wonderful, shocking, but surprising, but yet perfect ending. Mm.